Uh, uh, last can call, uh, at the end of last month, uh, MBNA and Carrick and Shannon closed. Uh, the final 160 staff uh, were laid off. At its height, MBNA employed 1,100 people in Carrick and Shannon. And while it's all well and good to see the job creation and job announcements on the east coast of the country, the reality is, uh, in parts of my constituency, they've been decimated by unemployment, and particularly in a town like Carrick and Shannon. And I want to know what the Minister is doing to try and secure an alternative employer for that town. Thank you, Deputy Minister. Deputy's concern about the loss of any job, and particularly the loss of a job in, 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 in a region uh, such as, as uh, Carrick and Shannon, uh, where MBNA have such, been such a major employer. Um, a series of actions are being implemented by local and national bodies to source an, an alternative employer and find alternative employment for those impacted by the MBNA redundancies, which took effect on the 28th of November. An interagency group led by Enterprise Ireland has been formed, and its membership includes representatives of all the relevant states players. This group has met on a monthly basis and is providing a coordinated approach to the needs of the affected staff and ensuring that all necessary steps are put in train to pursue an, an alternative investor. I have kept in regular contact with our agency representatives on that group. The activities of the group include details of the staff and skills capabilities of the facility have been collated. IDA, along with MBNA, Bank of America, has produced a marketing pack for potential investors. The global IDA team continues to market MBNA facility to a range of potential investors through its network. Enterprise Ireland is marketing the facility to its client base. Uh, there have been a small number of preliminary inquiries about the facility, both from foreign-owned and Irish-owned businesses, but it's too early in the process to be specific about their potential. The work of the interagency group will continue, and IDA and Enterprise Ireland will work to market the MBNA facility to a range of potential investors and to respond to requests for information from potential interested parties. Deputy Dennis Doctor. Thank you, uh, Last uh, Minister, if I can bring you back to that comment that you've made that there have been a small number of preliminary inquiries about the facility, both from foreign owned and Irish owned businesses. Now, you uh, gave me that comment here in the House three months ago, uh, and what I want to know is, Minister, what progress has been made in, in progressing any of these preliminary inquiries uh, in the last three months? Thank you, Minister. Yeah, I mean, there, there are a, a number, as I say, both on the uh, Enterprise Ireland side and on the IDA side. Um, these are still uh, active. Uh, the leads are still very much alive. Um, I suppose a lot of them hinge on some additional contract being won as being a key. As you know, when MBNA withdrew, they didn't leave behind a body of work that uh, a new investor could simply take up, and that would be the, the starting point. Uh, and that is undoubtedly a, a constraint that uh, they, they, they have to work through. Uh, so there have been a number of site visits by those, those, uh, uh, those interested parties, and both IDA and EI are continuing to, to work with them. I've met, as you know, with the local authority, with the, the, the county manager. Uh, I know Simon Harris is also, Minister Harris has also met uh, in respect of, of opportunities, either in the financial service or procurement area. So we, we are very actively pursuing every opportunity on this, and it's not a, a case of, of any uh, loss of attention to it. Um, you, and I, I keep in regular contact with the team, and we will do our very best to, to find something. Come on, just not to... um, Minister, you, you make the comment that uh, MBNA didn't leave a, a body of work, and, and you're correct in relation to that. But MBNA had a body of work uh, on offer for sale for the previous two years prior to its announcement that it was going to close. Uh, and my question to you, Minister, is the interagency group was established after MBNA announced that it was going to close the facility uh, in November. Should that interagency group not have been established when NBNA said it was getting out of the business in Carrick and Shannon, or Bank of America said it was getting out of the business in Carrick and Shannon, uh, and was looking for uh, a potential buyer? And really, that uh, the agency sat back at that stage, rather than being proactive, establish the interagency group at that stage, where there would be uh, have been a body of work uh, that would have maybe attracted a potential alternative employer in. 
No, that's not accurate. I mean, the IDA were very, very active with Bank of America in that whole process of seeking a buyer. Uh, and you know, clearly that was something that was pursued both nationally and internationally. Uh, they did succeed in getting a buyer, as you know, for the domestic book, but the, the, the UK book was one which they didn't. And from the MBNA point of view, declining volumes of activity on the book and their very substantial site in Chester resulted in them making a, a decision that we, we could not overcome. I suppose the point of the interagency group is obviously there are new needs that arise in terms of the role of social protection, the role of training, the role of other bodies uh, in the context of, of that. But there was a very active engagement. And indeed, I had very uh, frequent engagement with Bank of America through that process as they sought to, to, to sell that book uh, to find interested uh, buyers. Um, so this is uh, an issue that clearly there are talent, ta they're very highly talented workforce, they have a very high level of, of experience in terms of compliance in a financial sector, so we continue to, to work really hard uh, to, to pursue uh, an opportunity here. Thank you. Deputy Nocton. Just uh, briefly, Minister, and I want to thank you, Minister, for, for the interest that you have taken uh, in this uh, particular issue. And I know that the IDA have been pushing this issue uh, internationally. But can I ask you, Minister, to take a personal interest in this over the next few months? Because we have a very tight window now if we're going to be able to attract an alternative employer uh, in there. The financial services sector is expanding rapidly in Dublin. But there is a squeeze in relation to available staff uh, in the Dublin region. Uh, and I think there is a, a window of opportunity there now to source an alternative employer and to relocate them to somewhere like Carrick and Shannon. And I would urge you, Minister, along with Minister Harris, to redouble your efforts in relation to this uh, and try and source an alternative employer for this location in the near future. Thank you, Deputy Minister. I accept that, and that is uh, precisely one of the avenues we are exploring to see are there companies who have established businesses uh, who are in an expansion phase uh, who would look at, at this location as a, a su suitable complement to what they're already doing in, in another location such as Dublin. So we're very actively looking at that. Come that. On with, uh, 